Look at you. Um, God has uh, still good. Amen. He's allowed us to uh, wake up and see each other on today during midweek. We're happy to see you back on this side, Brother Smith. And I uh, hope that you enjoyed yourself. Uh, we missed you all last week and had the last two Sundays, actually. Uh, but happy you're back. Um, you miss Faye, uh, preach a dynamic sermon on Sunday. You can go back and watch it. You know, that's why it's being recorded, right? <laughs> all right, good to see you, Sister Lavender. And I think Charles might be in the background, uh, Sister Mills. And um, Sister Freeman's own, so you know, I always forget when we get to the end, so she may as well get on now and say her uh, <laughs> hello and how you doing. And as Good we get to roll, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Sister Robin. If, uh, well, actually, yeah, Sister Robin, if you can open us up with prayer and Minister Faye, uh, you can close us out with prayer. To, um, on today yeah. after um we hear this awesome lesson uh, we still in acts um okay. and in which way the church is moving father we thank you oh god for this great privilege that we thank have you. to get on this zoom call we just thank you for these who are on and those who are going to get on we even thank you for the ones who had a desire to get on father but for different reasons could not get on. We ask your blessings to be upon us. We ask your blessings to be upon our church family, all of our families, oh God. And we thank you. We're in expectation of what your word will just say to us tonight, God. Mm. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Robin. Now, uh, Mr. Smith, you can have the flow. Okay. Um... I have to uh, always start with Acts chapter one, verse number eight. Uh, you all can turn there if you want to, or you can stay in chapter eight where we were, it doesn't matter. Uh, in Acts chapter one, first of all, let me say, we all have to remember that in the book of Acts, this is the beginning of the church as we know it today. So, uh, God had in his plan to create this uh, organism, I won't say organization, create this organism that, that we call the church to bring his word into the world. Uh, he sent his son and there were witnesses to him being in the world, which we called his disciples or as Jesus called them, the apostles. And they were supposed to just tell what they had seen. But in, in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, they were supposed to stay in Jerusalem until they received power. That's what Jesus asked them to do. Then after that, Robin, they were supposed to be witnesses of Jesus in Jerusalem. Okay. Then in Judea and Samaria. Again, remember, Judea and Samaria is the surrounding area. So just a reminder, the church got to growing. It, things were going. The apostles got comfortable the uh, membership had grown Faye, over 5,000. And so everything was going well. Um, they had the little situation with the Hellenists or those uh, widows. And they took care of that by getting, uh, uh, they call them servants in the scripture. We refer to them often as deacons. Um, and two of those deacons were Stephen and Philip. Uh, I bring up Philip tonight because uh, we're going to do some dealing with that particular situation. Uh, and and um, we know what happened. Then all of a sudden, 
uh, the apostles had been in and out of jail for different for um, um, witnessing of Jesus Christ. And then all of a sudden, Stephen does it. But Stephen gets stoned to death by the members of the Sanhedrin Council. And we remember there was this guy named Saul who was standing there uh, holding their cloaks. And I used to say back in the day, you can't throw a good brick, Kelvin Stewart. You can't throw one, man, with your coat on. You got to take your cloak off so you can throw it. So uh, Saul was there holding their coats for them. Now, who was Saul? Saul was a Jew, and he was also from the tribe of Benjamin. But Saul was born in the province of Cilicia which means by birth, Saul was a Roman citizen. Now you have to remember that way down the road because uh, eventually Saul is going to end up in Rome and get a little special treatment for a while, uh, but because of his citizenship. Also, Paul uh, Saul was the son of a Pharisee. So he knew the law or the Jewish law and uh, he was set out because of this new church deal with this new person called Jesus Christ that would come up against what he believed. And he believed that that had to be destroyed. So he was set on destroying the church. And that, and that uh, Sister Faye, was by any means possible. So he set out to destroy the church. Now the floodgates of persecution were opened. Um, people had to run, every believer now, not just the apostles, but every believer now was threatened with violence and even death. And so people began to run for their lives. Uh, Sister Robin, I, I, I wanted to mention tonight, you know, everything changes. Uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but that's a part of life. Everything changes. And so God used this particular situation where Stephen was killed to get his word out because they had not done what Jesus told them to do. They were supposed to be taking the word out. They hadn't sent out any missionary trips uh, outside of Jerusalem. Uh, they hadn't gone out to evangelize in those areas. And it was time for them to move. So God used this situation with Stephen and with Saul to get people out because now people are running out of Jerusalem because they are afraid. They are running for their lives. In Acts 8, chapter 1, the church, uh, also remember now, you have to keep it in the back of your mind that um, in Acts, when they refer to the 12 who are with Jesus, those are the apostles. But all the people that join the church, which includes Stephen and Philip and all these other people, they were called disciples. So when they are referring to disciples now, they were referring to everybody else, okay? So the church was all scattered throughout Samaria and Judea now, except the apostles. We found that out in Acts 8, chapter 1. The apostles themselves stayed in Jerusalem. Then we get over to Acts chapter 4, I mean 8, chapter, I mean chapter 8, verse 4. Those who were scattered, as the scripture says, preached the word everywhere they went. Um, this may have been a more of sharing than actually preaching, but sharing could be preaching, preaching could be sharing, so it's kind of the same thing. But now the missionary journey that God wanted to happen, happened, and evangelism started, okay? Any questions so far? Robin, you, you, I think you're about to ask me something. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I think nope. you're good right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, in Acts 8, 5 through 8, we get the great 
uh, Samaria miracle where Philip, and I just want to remind you that Philip, this is not Philip the apostle, the, not one of the apostles with Jesus. This is Philip, and I looked this up in several commentaries, Pastor, so if you got one to say something different, you have to tell me. But Philip was also chosen when Stephen was chosen to look out for those widows uh, way back when they had their problem. But Philip was, he was highly visible in Jerusalem. He was one of those people. But Philip also ran away. And guess where he ran? He ran to Samaria. Um, then once he gets to Samaria, he started preaching there. And the Holy Spirit came when the, uh, I mean, the, the people believed the word. And uh, they had not really received the Holy Spirit until the apostles came because the apostles heard about this great miracle work that was going on there and they came, uh, at least they sent John and uh, Peter, Peter and John came. And once they came and prayed with them, the Holy Spirit came and they laid hands on them. Uh, and that's when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we get to uh, Acts 8, 18 through 19 and we meet this guy named Simon who got real confused about what all this stuff was. And he thought it was, now he believed, uh, Brother Stewart said, it, the scriptures say he believed, but he didn't have it quite all together. He thought that this was something that he could possess himself, this receiving of the Holy Spirit. And uh, um, it kind of messed him up there real good. Um, so, we get today. Are there any questions about anything we've covered so far? Sister Faye, did I do a pretty good job? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's move on. Today we're in Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Okay. If you're there, you there, well, y'all not on camera, so you can't shake your head. So I was, mm -hmm. I was going to say, say me or something, but I got you. It's not but six of us on today, so, so far. But in Acts chapter uh, 8, verse 26, everybody there? All right, here we go. We there. Now, now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert. Remember now he was in Samaria and God told him to move. He sent an angel to tell him to move. All right. So he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia. Where is, where is, where is Ethiopia? Africa. Africa, right, Ethiopia is a country in Africa, all right, so um, he, he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who is charged, in charge, who had charge of all her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship. Now, this was the money man from the queen, the treasurer. So he was a very important person. But notice now he came to Jerusalem to worship. That is amazing. Well, he was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah, the prophet. Now, he had to be special to have what is the Bible? You know, we got to understand now what we're reading in the New Testament has not been written yet. Okay. Uh, the Old Testament was the Bible then. So to have a copy of the Old Testament, you really have to be somebody special 
because they didn't have uh, uh, um, the Christian bookstore back then where you could go down and purchase a book. Okay? Mm -hmm. There were very few of them. Uh, and they were copied by the different priests, the scribes would make copies. And for you to get one, that was very rare, first of all. So, but he has one, which means that he was an important person. Uh, but when you represent the queen, you can get that right pastor. You, I mean, you know, when you're the man, especially the man with the money, you know, you can kind of get what you want. So he was reading Isaiah. Okay. Then the spirit in verse 29, then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake the chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can, unless someone guides me, and he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the script she read was this, very familiar. Everybody should probably know all of this by heart. He was led as a, as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before his shearer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Um, I just, you know, you know the Lord had to be in it for him to be reading that particular part of the scripture when Philip comes up. I mean, that's very unique there. That sounds like a good sermon, Pastor. I need to probably <laughs> highlight that one in the in the text uh, to bring that one to us on the, at a later date. Um, so the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does this, pro of the prophet does this, I mean, who say this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now, here again, it's, it's real important that we understand um, that God wanted people to bring his word. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a preacher, um, but uh, in search for a word to say, all you do is preach to Jesus, you know, that's, that's what it's all about that, you know, you don't have to get some dynamic thing that, cause something that's never been, something that's never been said before to do this great presentation. Cause it really is not about you. It's about bringing the word forth mm -hmm. so that people can understand. And it's a witness to me. So, the apostles, all they had to do was talk about what they had seen. I still say, uh, if we think back to the Sermon on the Mount and all of that, you know, Jesus was talking to the apostles. Yeah, the crowd was there and, you know, they needed to hear too. But he was talking to the apostles because later on he's going to say, you know, I, these things that, that I've done, you're going to do even more. So you need to hear all this to prepare you for it. So uh, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, then the Holy Spirit brought this all back to them, to their remembrance. So uh, Philip had to have been somewhere in the crowd there to see what Jesus was doing. Um, if not, then he definitely heard from the apostles and believed and was able. And once you receive the Holy Spirit, and maybe that's something, Pastor, we need to, you know, work on as Christians more, you know, just to, you know, pray that we have received the Holy Spirit. What about that, Faye? What you think about that? Well, I, I do, I agree. And it's something that I pray every day. Um, is 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 for the Lord to fill me with His Holy Spirit. That's a daily prayer for me, um, because it's the Holy Spirit that makes the difference. And you know, even um, how 
you know, the Lord, how this, that he was led, how Philip was led to even um, go near this chariot. You know, he had to be in a position to hear from God and, 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 and hear the Holy Spirit and be led. And that's what's so important is, you know, to be able to hear God in the moment through the Holy Spirit. Because uh, he, he can, you are missing if, if, you, if you're not in tune. That's right. That's right. I, you know, as a child, you know, I don't know when I was younger, let's, let, let me say about me when I was younger and, you know, I've been AME Zion uh, all my life. Uh, but more people used to quote shout in church. You know, we had, there were more experiences of people shouting and crying and, uh, you know, falling out and running around the church, all of that. You know, we had all those experiences. I did as a child, and I saw all of this during during some of the services. And you know, of course, in my child man and us kids, we, you know, we were saying that people caught the caught the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit caught them. But you know, uh, that was just what, how we looked at it. You know, mm -hmm. and so. You know, in, in some ways, um, you know, I never experienced that in my growing up. So, you know, I've always had that question, am I supposed to be, you know, if the Holy Spirit comes on me, how do I know, you know, uh, am I supposed to pass, fall out? Am I, you know, am I supposed to shout at, you know, um, uh, you know, I've had experiences in church where, you know, I felt where I cried, you know, um, where, um, you know, you just, uh, you know, you just, you know, your emotions kind of take over. Uh, so, uh, Pastor, can you address that a little bit about uh, experiencing the Holy Spirit? You know, because each of us would, there would be different with everybody. It wouldn't necessarily be the same. Is that correct, Pastor? Can, yeah. can, I, can, I, can, I, can I say something right before the Pastor? Because I know he's going to bring it home. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead, brother. <laughs> Brett Smith, it, that just reminds me, um, and I, I agree with you because as a kid, I would, you know, down at Beautiful Zion, we would see, we, we, I had a lot of opportunity to, to witness that myself. You know, people was, more people were shouting and and, and it, it would scare me. Uh, and I would see the urchins come around and try to help them and fan them and, and different things. Um, but but seemed like, you know, as I, as I think about it, you know, I feel I, I, when I when I when I'm when I'm when I'm thinking that I'm feeling the Holy Spirit, it's a chill come about my body. Just it just something that comes about me. Just you can feel it, um, and, and and I feel that's the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, but I know maybe others may feel something different. But I, I just want to share what you know how I feel from time to time when it when it comes when it comes on me. Let me, uh, uh, Brother Smith. <clears throat> Uh, Brother Stewart, that is um, some of the ways the Holy Spirit do fall down on you. You feel um, the chill. You feel, you have a feeling that you have never felt before, a feeling that man can't give you. Um, and that's God's confirmation, Jesus' confirmation, letting you know, um, you know, that I'm with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. Something you can't explain a lot of times. And there's, um, you know, some cry, you know, some run, some dance, some, you know, whatever that spirit um, leads them and got them to do, um, that's, you know, that's what happens. Um, you see feet moving, you see hand clapping. You, you know, sometimes when the Holy Spirit takes over, um, it's beyond your control. Um, you can't control it, the spirit um, controls it. I, I can go back to uh, about eight years ago when I was over at uh, Spring Hill. I remember preaching a sermon and I remember the Holy Spirit just taking over and talking through me. And uh, everything I had written down, Brother Smith, I didn't say nothing that was on my tab. <laughs> uh, and afterwards, I just praised God. I was like, wow, I, you know, he... He, it took over me yeah I had no control of what I and I, I knew what I was saying but I wasn't saying it mm -hmm. uh, the Holy Spirit was saying it. 
So, um, and it, it was mind boggling. And I, you know, I, I, I wrestled with the Lord for a couple of weeks because I'm like, well, it was an experience that I wanted to keep experience, experiencing. So um, those are some, remember when he said, when the Holy Spirit um, takes over, um, one, you have self-control, but you know, a lot of us will say we're out of control, <laughs> um, but it, it takes over. But Brother Smith, while I, uh, you let me speak, can I, can I say one thing? Um, I wanted to talk about when you talk about the, um, the eunuch, what were they? Um, you know, the eunuch were men that was castrated, Robin. Um, their testicles were removed. Remember, they guarded the women. So, um, you know, we would always say they did that so they wouldn't try and, you know, um, have sexual relations with the, the ladies they were guarding under, uh, under the queen. But it's amazing how the angel spoke to Philip and you can imagine the chariot just moved and say he ran. Here he is, he's running while his chair is moving, Philip's running, and then he get invited up. <laughs> and Brother Smith, I like what you said when we talk about preaching Jesus, that's, that's what he did. He said, then he began to preach Jesus. There's no other name under heaven. There's nobody else we should be preaching but Jesus. And you know, and, and then it was saying, and we see that every day where Pastors and preachers try and concoct all these different sermons to, you know, bring glory to themselves doing their preaching. But it's all about Jesus. It's all about God. It's all about. And when you put that point out, remember, Noah preached the same sermon, the same sermon for 120 years. And people still didn't listen. People still not listening to us, Robin. That's uh, right. Minister Faye, they still not listen up. You know, their body is there, but their mind is on the other side of town sometimes when, when they're there. But you know when um, they're in tune into God's word, you know, because they're not shouting just to, just to be shouting. They're shouting because they, they hear it and, and, and they feel it and they've experienced it then. And, and I'm gonna be quiet, Brother Smith, and let you finish uh, this lesson. Oh, that's that's all right, Pastor. Uh, I know I used to visit. You know, um, my father was a preacher, so yeah, Brother Stewart, I had to come down to beautiful Zion quite a bit. Uh, my uncle was pastoring there, Reverend Croon. And uh, right, uh, right. I, I was telling somebody, but, I was telling somebody about that story just the other day. Right. How I got hooked. How I got hooked on the Alabama football players because. <laughs> uh, his son used to bring the players down to church, and that was the, that was the, that was a big inspiration to me just to see the players, and then I read about them, then I see them in church on Sunday. You know, I was that was that was amazing to me. Yes, yes, but um, you know, our parents had some very difficult times during those days because um, you you know we that. think we're having some hard times now, but Robin, we really aren't having that hard of a time. Things have gotten a lot better. Now, I'm not saying that they're perfect. Uh, we know there's, there are no perfect situations anyway. We're just striving toward perfection. But uh, just just to imagine, you know, that the best you can do is, uh, you know, the bottom of the heap, you know, and you lucky to get there because there were a lot of people back then who didn't have jobs at all. You know, they just had to do what they had to do to survive. So you had a lot of farmers um, who would grow their own food. People, a lot of people, a lot more people had land back then. My granddad. Uh, and then they were mistreated. I remember trying to pick cotton, uh, Reverend Freeman. I picked a whole bucket full. And that, that was it. That wasn't even worth the penny, Brother Stewart. <laughs> they, they, my dad just laughed at me because I, I, I was done. But, uh, <laughs> You think of all the, you know, you think of all the mistreatment. Uh, my buddy's uh, mother uh, worked for, you know, one of the white families uh, that lived over in Alberta. Um, 
they treated her pretty well. My grandmother worked for a family that lived near where I actually where I live now, and she would walk to take care of those folk. Um, but they had they had really difficult times back then, and there wasn't a lot to go to either. It's not like today, you know. Um, today, uh, people are com competing with the church for the first time, especially on Sunday morning. I found out that. Uh, Hillcrest softball, you know, they practice on Sunday. Uh, travel softball, you know, they're traveling throughout the United States, but that happens on Sundays. Uh, yeah, can, and that's can, just one little thing. Yeah, Go ahead, Pastor. Years, I, I, you know, you brought back memories there. I can remember our kids were smaller on Sundays, you know, volleyball, the AAU, and basketball, mm -hmm. AAU, and it used to you know, used to bother me that, mm -hmm. you know, they, they having these things and, and, but here's the thing, there are, you know, uh, organizations that they don't care about God's house. Um, they care about making that money, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get these kids into pro so they can retire. I mean, it's, it's a whole lot of reasons behind it. Um, but even, uh, you know, I tell you all the time, I was convicted when I was chasing, running after them, you know, them grass. You know, I had 300 properties when I had a contract with, with the government. And on Sundays, them zero turns be rolling. We need to be going. <laughs> and, right. you know, it convicted me that, you know, mm -hmm. this, this don't supposed to happen. This is the Lord's day. I should be, you know, worshiping and praising God and giving Jesus glory. And here I am, you know, making sure that money is getting rolling in. And, it, you know, and God has a way of letting you know that and getting your attention that you put in this. And here's the thing to be truthful, as I think about it now, that was my God. Right. And that was, I was putting those things before him. You know, God said, He's a jealous God. Don't put nothing before. So, um, and those are some of the things that we have to recognize. And as Christians, you got to recognize that too when you have kids and grandchildren. That um, I can tell you, even now, there's some members at some of the other churches, you know, their kids dance and things like that. And on Sundays, they out of town and have to go behind, you know. Those are some of the things that you really have to um, really have to watch and say, okay, who's the most important? That sports or me yes 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 amen all right let's let's get back to the scripture thank you pastor and brother Stewart. thank you uh verse number 34 so the eunuch answered philip and said i ask you of whom does this uh does the prophet say this of himself or of some other man then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the script at this scripture, preached Jesus, preached Jesus to him. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ. He is the son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Now, here is a very important scripture in 39. Very important. Now, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing now that means that the eunuch went away rejoicing because philip kind of disappeared okay mm -hmm. you have to remember that it wasn't until today pastor i gotta admit i had never seen this scripture before never saw it in all my reading i never seen this before I thought this was so unique. In 40, but Philip was found in Azotus. Now, Azotus 
is a Philistine uh, city. Azotus used to be known as Ashdod. See the thing, one thing about one thing about the scripture, it all connects, you know. Uh, names that were how you can go all the way back in scripture, way back in Genesis. Uh, these are the same cities, they just have different names. One reason why they have different names is because they have different people ruling over them. Uh, we're going to see a city name at the end of this that was changed because of Roman rule. You know, um, Alexander the Great had taken over one time, which meant that this this was on the Greece, Greek, uh, the Greek city of uh, Greece. Greece had ruled these places. So some of those names were named, changed to Greek names. And now you got the Romans taking over, so they changed the name to something else. But this is an old Philistine. You remember the Philistines, right? Who David had that situation with yeah. Goliath, right? Those mm -hmm. were the Philistines. The Philistines always gave the Jews trouble for, <laughs> you know, because they wouldn't do right. And so God would let their enemies, you know, kind of mess with them every now and then. As the kids used to say, them, them kids messing with me. So the Philistines used to be messing with the Jews every now and then uh, because they wouldn't do right and God would allow it to happen. But Philip was found in Azotus and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Now, here again, I want to emphasize something. Those cities from Azotus all the way up, even go back to Samaria, really. These were Gentiles. They were not Jews. Now, Samaria were former Jews. Remember, Robin, I always like to bring that out, that in the northern kingdom of Israel, um, when they were um, captured because of you know, their disobedience, their idol worship, uh, the Assyrians brought people into the northern kingdom, and they mixed with them so you get a mixed blood of people and those people were called samaritans so all these people were gentiles so the gentiles are getting the word the word is going back to africa to ethiopia because the eunuch is bleed and been baptized and you know so the word is spreading and this is what god now this is what the church was created to do the church was not <laughs> created for us to go in every Sunday morning, just sit down and sing, wish we go home. We're supposed to all be spreading the word. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be doing what Jesus did. You know, we kind of get that confusal sometimes, as my kids used to say uh, in the eighth grade, they, I mean, seventh grade, they say, they wouldn't say confused, they say confuzzled. They, mm -hmm. we get, we get it, you know, we get comfortable you know, we get the good air conditioning going and we got the uh, padded pews and the choir sounding good. And, uh, you know, um, we might, we know we know we'll have some, some good food on the fourth Sunday, Pastor. And so we kind of get, we get mixed up with what it is we're supposed to be doing. You know, those things are good to get us fueled up to go to work. But we got to fuel up and we got to go to work. So I'm not sure. But if you start looking at it, maybe COVID was that um, stoning of Stephen in our time. Because a lot of stuff now we can't do anymore, Pastor. And, you know, I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit. Is that okay? Can I stand up here a little bit? Okay. <laughs> you know, God created a system for us to take care of the church. We are members of the church and we are supposed to take care of it. And we do that through tithes and offerings, okay? So that we don't have to do all of these fundraising things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I understand us having activities where we are raising stuff to try to help out in the community where we're asking for water, we're asking for, you know, 
diapers and pamper, whatever we're asking for. That's because we're trying to do ministry. We're trying to evangelize. But to take care of St. Peter AME Zion Church, we're supposed to be tithing. You know, and and you know, you have to do your best with that. I'm I'm not fussing about tithing now. So if you're giving an offering, I'm gonna let Pastor do that. If you're giving an offering, but you're supposed to give. Another church should not have to take care of St. Peter. Because we are members there. We should do that. So we shouldn't have our, so now COVID comes. And people who used to have all these four Sunday programs and all these, you know, hat days and you know, I know we do men and women day and um and we do, you know, a couple of things. But we wouldn't have to do those if everybody would do like they're supposed to do. You know, if everybody would give like they're supposed to do. You guys, I'm a I'm a preacher steward. And I'm just coming back from LA, so I'm gonna say this once, you know, after next Sunday, I can't say it. But you no, know, you'd just be surprised at the number of people who don't do anything at the church. They don't do nothing. They don't give nothing, brother Stuart. They don't give nothing. They just come and enjoy the air conditioning and don't don't feel responsible enough to at least do something. You know, uh, it's easier to carry your heavy load. If everybody helps, you know, I'm not fussing about tithing, but I'm fussing about giving. You ought to give something. You know, the Lord is, is you know, you pray to the Lord for that job. Pray for the Lord. Even if you just getting a, uh, and I'm going to say this, brother Stuart, pastor can beat me up. He hasn't seen me lately, so he can't, he can't hit me yet. <laughs> but even if you're getting a crazy check or whatever, you know what I'm saying? That's something. Lord provide it for you and you can't give none of it to the Lord. That's just, and maybe we're looking at it the wrong way. Okay. Now, how did this come out of this? I have no idea, Sister Faye. I, I don't know that it didn't say this. That wasn't in the scripture I was reading, but I, it, it's just a concern of mine that, um, you know, we, we take the church uh, for granted sometimes. Too many of us come with our hand out. We come to get and not to give. Okay, I want to do two more scriptures and then I'm going to stop. Brother Stewart, you were about to say something? No, no, no. no. But okay. I want, you know, Go it's ahead, funny. Um, in our Sunday school lesson, I know we were talking about the Holy Spirit and um and the functions. And I think, and I, and I don't know, Pastor, I may be saying it wrong, but I think it's paraclete. Um, but it was basically yes. talking about um, right. the the function of the Holy Spirit, how it comes to help and to comfort and to help with the exhortation and to rebuke. So, mm. you know, we think about the Holy Spirit, you know, we oftentimes thinking, you know, or, or hear about the Holy Spirit as the, the function of praise or indwelling in that capacity. But it come, it, the Holy Spirit comes to guide us, to lead us, and to rebuke us. So, you know, with what you're saying, you know, that is a part of the Holy Spirit's function as well. It's sometimes that rebuke and that blessing have to come um, mm. to remind us. Mm. Um, well, that, you know, I just, I just thought about that. Thank you, Sister Faith, for bailing me out. Pastor can <laughs> put his... Put his brick down. He wanted to stone me Sunday morning when I go to church. <laughs> Look, but, I'm, uh, I'm you're, you're you. so right. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you all the way on, on those. I, you know, it, it goes back to we do what we want to do. Right. We buy what we want to buy. Right. You know, and you know, we spend our money how we want to spend it. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is not guiding us in those efforts. Um. Right. Um. You know, we I was taught that when you have your, your your fist so tight that you can't get anything out of it, but you also can't get anything in it. Uh, when we learned that when God said, if you give, I give. When we learned that um, he's, you know, if you take care of the church, he's, you know, he'll pour out more blessings that you won't have received. Once we can get that in our spirit, then people... Um, would give and i know when we have new members 
that's one thing uh, Brother Smith um, teach, you know, um, in, uh, in orientation, you know, that, you know, you tithe, you give, but then some people, you know, still hadn't been taught that and probably need to be taught. Um, we may need to have some courses. And I know Cammy did a good job of, you know, letting people know mm. to take care of the church. I mean, once you take care of God's house, God will take care of your house. When people, um, you know, hold back because, you know, they want a new suit or they want a new dress or they need some new shoes. And, they, you know, God is a provider of that. He, he'll he make sure it happen when it's time. Um, mm. He'll make you make sure there's an abundance uh, when if you just trust, uh, if we can just trust and believe that if we take care of the church, it's going to take care of us. Um, so many people you can see. They struggle because they don't take care of God's house. Uh, they they struggle. I mean, His word is 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 His word. He says that um, He love a cheerful giver. He He says that you know when it comes to giving, well, those are things that you should do. But He also is a God that holds us accountable too. That okay, you could have done this for me. You could have done this for my house. You could have. Um, these are things that help, um, but you didn't do it. So uh, even though he's still a loving God, he's still a God that um, with accountability. Now, I know some of our members, and they've come to me um, last year, this year, um, that, hey, I give more if so much we can go out the door. <laughs> So the concern is what? Because what they, said? they said they give more if so much wouldn't go out the church, meaning you know how we pay our assessments and how we give, but we're part of a connection, and that's those um, things were there, you know, in place. That's part of the church. That's part of um, the structure. Mm -hmm. So hey, this is what we set in front of you. Um, Okay, you have church, but you also have these obligations. And some say, I won't give um, as much as I could because it's going out. But here's the thing. You're not, you're giving to God's house. And if you keep your focus on that, <laughs> that I'm giving to the Lord and, and not of man, then um, life will be better. I'm telling you. I mean, when you look around, uh, we we helped the church. Um, well, we've helped several churches, um, and I know we've helped them before Cameron got there. But Dr. Cameron made a call Sunday to tell me thank you because one of the churches um, AC went out, and uh, it's a twenty year old unit, and they couldn't afford it. So we he called the pastor called, and and we uh, I said yeah we'll 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 send you something, and we did. And uh, it was, a, you know, it wasn't to broadcast to everybody, but he told Dr. Cameron. And Dr. Cameron called and, and, and thanked me for it. And he said, you know, Pastor, the more we gave out when I was a pastor, <laughs> the more we received into the church. Right. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. God said, when you give, I give. Mm -hmm. But when we're not giving, then we don't have room to receive. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let me be, I'm gonna get off because Benny, you know, he didn't, he didn't lure me in. <laughs> Pastor, I, I'd like to comment on, on what you said though. If, if, we, if we don't, and I worry about us, because if we don't watch it, you know, the mindset, we are falling for uh, the, the trick or the bait of Satan in trying mm -hmm. and instead of giving from our heart, you know, even if, you, and I can't say, you know, I, I don't want to criticize anyone who has, who has in their mind that they will give more if it wasn't going out. First of all, either you were born in this denomination or mm -hmm. you joined the right. denomination. And part of being in this denomination are those things that we do as a connection, like mm -hmm. supporting our colleges, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, you know, the, the money doesn't just go in the pocket of, of a bishop, you mm -hmm. know, 
uh, who can get robbed uh, in a New York church right. of, of a million dollars. That mm. that's not how our our money is accounted for. We are audited, and and so I am afraid that the person with that mindset is falling for the tricks of Satan, who mm. wants you to be confused. And wants you not to give. Mm -hmm. And so if it's not that excuse, it will be another Mm -hmm. and another and another. And again, you know, I I was just at the dentist today and I was talking about the fact, and I know we've gotten way off subject, but I got to tell this, (laughs) you know, back in the day, there was a, there was a show called In Living Color and they had uh, uh, little characters. And they were, and I'm not trying to be derogatory, but this was one of the skits they did about the Jamaicans. And they mm-hmm. had a lot of jobs and they would tease if the person only had three jobs then they would, they would, you know, call them lazy lima bean and you, mm-hmm. you need it. You should have another job and that kind of thing. Benny and I had five jobs between us. Five. Mm-hmm. I had two, he had three. Five mm-hmm. jobs. And we couldn't make it. We weren't tithing. Right. Right. We weren't doing right. We had holes in our pocket. Student loans. Both of us had student loans. We were both teaching, and we and, and in order to pay the student loans back, that that takes a lot of your money. You know, mm-hmm. you I think you know when you got to pay them loans, it's something when you get in the loans, but when you got to mm-hmm. start paying them back, mm-hmm. you know. And we had five jobs between us. He'll tell you he was working for a funeral home. He was being a custodian at night. I was working teaching. He was teaching. And then I was working at Kmart part-time. Mm. We couldn't wow. keep a dime in our pocket because mm. we weren't doing right. Yeah. Yes, I grew up I grew up Church of God. And I know I'm talking too long. Benny mm-hmm. had a daddy who was a preacher. But we mm-hmm. still weren't doing right yeah. by God. And mm. until we, under the, under the leadership of Reverend Cameron, who taught us, about yeah. the value, and I don't know what the what Creflo talking about right now, and all this other little stuff is going on about tithing. Yeah. But that that falls in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Yeah. But until we started to do God right, he started doing right by you. Yeah, speak it. That's all what right happened. now. I, I saw it coming, that Sister Smith. <laughs> and you know, you that that's a testimony that uh, we all need to hear, and that's. That's something that I experienced. I mean, in my younger years, I was mad about giving five dollars, Robin. Yeah, I was mad. But once I taught, I was taught, you know, the real meaning of giving. You know, I started increasing. You know, ten dollars and fifteen and twenty, and the Lord was increasing. What I, you hear me? What I'm saying was, I, as more as much as I was giving, the Lord was giving back. I couldn't beat His giving. And then fifty dollars was easy. Hundred dollars was easy, but in my way of thinking, once until I was taught, it was hard for me to give it. Mm-hmm. But it was. It was now. And when we talk about when I go back to the uh, chasing the money and wasn't giving like I was supposed to, my contract was three hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. I couldn't tell you where three quarters of that money went. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I wasn't doing what God told me to do. I wasn't giving. I'm looking. When I get to 1099, I'm like, where is this money mm-hmm. that they say I made? And um, and that's what really, you know, it, it opens your eyes to say, okay, all right, now it goes through your hand like water when you're not doing what God said to do. He has a way of getting it out of you. He has a way of getting it back and he has a way of getting your attention uh, when you don't take care of his house. I had money to take care of that house. I had money to take care, to give and to bless people within the church that was less fortunate. But here I am, I had other things I would be spending on. So um, once we do what he tell us to do, he'll, when he say he'll open up doors, Sister Smith, thank you for sharing that. He'll open up doors, he'll open up windows. you won't have enough room to receive them. He meant that. Amen. Amen. And once I started giving all the jobs, because they called me Jamaica, when she brought that up, because I had so many, <laughs> I was doing everything. And, and once I started opening up, 
then I was able to not have to work all those jobs because now I'm giving Amen. like God saying God's giving back. He's opening doors. He's Amen. saying, okay, here's a better job. Here's more money. Okay, leave that one alone. You have to, you have to know that. That when the blessings come and they come from God, it, it, he meant what he said. Amen. But that was a, a powerful testimony there, Sister Smith. So thank you for sharing. All right, Pastor, I'm, I'm going to close right there. Thank you all for, for witnessing. And that's, that's what we need in the church. Uh, we need to tell these stories so people understand in case they're going through the same kind of thing. Um, but you, you see what Philip has done in, in this particular uh, part of the scripture right here, which means that the word is starting to spread. And, you know, <laughs> once things start to go on, Robin, you know, the devil is going to pop up somewhere. So and we're going to start... Um, chapter nine next week and and the devil's gonna pop up but god's god got something for him this time because uh, we're running late so i'm gonna stop i wanted to do the next two scriptures but we'll save it for next week so i'm going to end right there are there any questions now about our our uh discussion tonight um faye i thought you was about to say something uh -uh. i know it i know it <laughs> You know, I just was, um, you know, how I say that um, when Philip, um, the Holy Spirit took Philip away from that place, you know, I was just, you know, thought about, you know, when, when, when God, when it's done, when the job is done, you know, uh, how he moved them on to somewhere else, you know, and that just, you know, that was just, that just blessed me, you know, how, you know, the, he, he was obedient, he got the job done and now it was time to, to go on and, and you know to the next assignment. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. All right, thank you all for putting up with me tonight, Pastor. I'm gonna turn it over to you because we're running out of time. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll right. start it up again next week. <laughs> well, let me thank you, Benny, um, for a great lesson talk again, and um, how you uh, you know, made some very, very points. I mean, we can read the Bible over and over and you will discover something that you missed before. You, you look at it and, you know, it's the Holy Spirit that will guide you to that, to say, okay, this is uh, something you need to bring out. But when you talked about, and Sister Faye, thank you again for bringing it up, how Philip uh, was, uh, you know, he, he called, how the Spirit of the Lord called away, how the Spirit of the Lord called him. How he called him away and his job was done. And sometimes, you know, we have to know when our job is done, when God says, okay, that's enough. We, sometimes we got to know when that's enough preaching, <laughs> when that's enough teaching, that's enough, you know, but his job was called away and the spirit moved him. But we noticed that Philip continued to do the will of God in the other city. He went to pray. And he just went out and preached. He did. He obeyed the spirit. And it, it'd be amazing that sometimes if we listen to that angel that comes and talk to us and tell us to do some things that, that God said, do. when that voice, when that spirit comes your way to tell you uh, things that are right to do and, and not are wrong, we should, you know, listen um, to that voice. But you, you great job on teaching. We can't wait to hear um, going forward the next time. Uh, for uh, for the next lesson, if we um, if we don't have any other questions, um, we'll have Sister uh, Minister Faye uh, to take prayer requests and, and pray and, and close us out. Are there any specific prayer requests this evening? Yes, yes, ma'am, Sister Faye, uh, Minister Faye. If you would lift up Howard Kroom, um, a relative um, who is just uh, battling uh, infections, has had his leg amputated and just holding on. And uh, we were able to see him at the family reunion. He made it one day, one night so, so that he could at least uh, see the family. And so if you would please lift up uh, him uh, in your prayer tonight. Howard Crow. 
Are there any other prayer I speak loudly. Sister Faye, lift up the Hollingsworth family. Oh, in the past, Sister Mary Hollingsworth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, lift, lift up Pastor uh, Steele, uh, Reverend Steele from Hunter Chapel. We spoke last night um, about that. We spoke about Brother Jimmy um, Hendrix as well as Mary um, Hollinsworth, you know, being you know pioneers in the church. So uh, he's, he's pretty taking it heavy. So let's uh, lift him up in prayer as they make um, arrangements. Are there any other prayer requests? Okay, may we pray? Oh, gracious God, it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we come, Lord. We come first thanking you for an opportunity to learn more about your word tonight, Lord. We ask that you let us not just be hearers of your word, but let us be doers and execution executors of your word as well. Lord, we come thank you for being a forgiving God today. And we ask you to continue to forgive us for all of our sins, Lord. Things we said wrong, thought wrong, did wrong, things that we were, were supposed to do and didn't do. Lord, we, we ask you to forgive us. And we thank you for being a forgiving God today. Lord, we ask you to bless every family that is represented here tonight. Bless our St. Peter family, Lord. Bless the leaders, Lord God encourage us to do those things that you're calling us to do in spite of adversity in spite of discouraging um in, in spite of so many things that we face we just ask you for power uh to continue on in your name doing the things that you you will have us to do lord we ask you to help us with our unbelief and our fears lord uh things that you're calling us to do to to be obedient lord help us be obedient to the spirit and what the spirit leads and guides us to do and say. But we ask you to help increase our fellowship with the Holy Spirit, Lord, and, and cultivate our relationship with the spirit so that we can grow more in you. We come rebuking the vices and the tricks of the enemy tonight. Every lie that the devil tells and, 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 and cast. We, we cast it back down to the pits of hell from whence they come. He has no power, no authority. And Lord, we come lifting up those families that are uh, have lost loved ones, Lord, those who are who are grieving, the, the Hollingsworth family, Lord, Pastor Steele, um, the Hendricks family, Lord. We actually to encourage those family and friends and loved ones Lord, as we get used to them not being on this side, Lord, we miss them. Um, but we just thank you, Lord, that we all have a, a heavenly home that's not made by hands, Lord God. And, and that we all have to go there around. And, that, and it's our time that we'll be, we'll be prepared. We'll be ready to go, Lord. And with the Croom, Howard Croom, Lord, we ask you to heal him and encourage his heart, Lord, as he endure. Uh, this, what he's enduring, Lord God, the amputation. And Lord, we ask that you even bless the doctors and his medical team, Lord God, so that they can uh, do what they need to do for him to help him be comfortable and, and, and be in a better place health-wise, Lord. Lord, as we prepare to go back to school, we ask you to bless the, the teachers and the administrators and the parents and the students, Lord. Keep us safe, Lord, and, and let us uh, teach these children and what they need, Lord God, not just academically, but for life, Lord, life lessons. Let us be those role models um, that they need, Lord. Bless parents, Lord God. Bless finances, Lord God. But whatever your people stand in need of, we ask you to bless them with it tonight, Lord. You know what we all stand in need of. And Lord, we ask you to bless again the leaders at St. Peter. Bless our pastor and our first lady and all our district leaders and uh, Lord God, 
to, to, to continue leading and guiding and be encouraged as we move forward in this journey. And Lord, we love you, Lord, those things that I don't know to pray. I ask that the Holy Spirit pray on, on my behalf and on our behalf, Lord God. We love you, Lord. We honor you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise that you do, Lord God. And this is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Let every heart that believes say amen. 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 Thank you, sister. You all have a great evening. It's been a uh, 